For lesson 67 today, we're going to move to some three-dimensional objects. So we're going to identify geometric solids. We're going to describe polyhedrons by their faces, edges, or vertices. And we're going to identify three-dimensional figures, and we're gonna, going to identify them by their flat patterns, which we call nets. So let's take a look, first of all, at the term polyhedron. This needs to be first thing in your notes. A polyhedron, three-dimensional figure that has only flat surfaces that are polygons. All right, so three-dimensional figures have only flat surfaces that are polygons. All right, let's talk about some terms with these polyhedrons then. Uh, face is a flat surface of a geometric solid or a polyhedron. An edge is a line segment formed where two faces intersect. And a vertex is a point where three or more faces meet. The plural of that is vertices. I need you to get this, uh, these three vocabulary terms in your notes also. All right, now the kind of shapes that we're talking about are ones one set of shapes here are called prisms, and this will be your third set of notes. And for this one, you only need to do the definition of a prism. A prism is a polyhedron with two congruent parallel bases. So they are two shapes that are bases. They are parallel to each other, connected by rectangles. Okay, very common prisms that we know of are rectangular prisms. That means the two bases are rectangles and triangular prisms where the two bases are triangles. Okay, we'll be looking at some of those three-dimensional shapes in class tomorrow. All right, now I would like you to imagine some of these three-dimensional shapes. Imagine pressing a flat rectangular object into clay. Okay, so maybe a, uh, a square disk of some kind. What would be the shape of the hole that is formed? Well, it would form the the rectangle all the way down into the clay, so that would form a rectangular prism, would be what the indentation would form. All right, now let's take a look at these. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. What three-dimensional shape would each form when they're pressed into the clay? All right, let's take a look at letter A. Uh, this would be very similar to the one that we just talked about, except this is technically a square, but if you press that in, it could either form a cube or it could form a rectangular prism depending on how far you pushed it into the clay. All right, so this will be number one, A. I would like you to identify for B and C what shapes you think that they would form if they were pressed into the clay. Now, let's talk about uh, some geometric solids and the shapes of each of these objects. And again, we'll work with some of these tomorrow a little more in class. If you had to describe the shape of a soccer ball based on its geometric name, that would be called a sphere. All right, so this will be number two in your notes. All right, uh, now letter B, identify what shape a can of soup forms and for letter C, a shoebox. So this again will be number two in your notes. All right, now imagining these three-dimensional shapes again, uh, three, what three-dimensional shape would each form as it spins? So if you think about that line of symmetry and if you would spin that uh, square around it, well, that would form a cylinder. You can imagine and you can even think of it kind of as a drill that would drill into like the earth in a cylindrical form. Now, um, if you spun this triangle here, well, you're gonna have just a point at the top. You're gonna have a wider base. It's gonna spin in a circle, so that would be a cone. And then if you had this circle spin on this line of symmetry, that would be a sphere. Okay, so again, how some two-dimensional shapes can form into three-dimensional shapes. All right, now let's take a look at um, some of these top and side views. If you had to identify number one here, this is the top view. This would be the side view. That would be a rectangular prism. Okay, rectangular prism. I'm not going to go ahead and write out all of these. We'll just talk about them. If this is the top view for number two and that's the side view, that would be a pyramid, and you can get specific with pyramid. This one has, uh, looks like maybe a rectangular base, so it would be a rectangular pyramid. 
Uh, for number three, if that's the top view and that rectangle is the side view, that would be a cylinder. Number three would be a cylinder. And then for number four, if you've got the top as a circle and this is a side view, that of course would be a cone. All right, let's identify then some of these shapes. Since this would have two identical bases, this shape here and on the back side the same, this is definitely a prism. Now we're going to identify what kind of prism it is by the base. Count how many sides there are on the polygon that forms the base. There are five. That makes it a pentagon. So it's a pentagonal prism. Pentagonal. Let's see if I can spell that out here. Okay. Again, it's a prism because it's two pentagons congruent to each other that are connected by rectangles. All right. Let's take a look at this next one. All right. This is also a prism because you can tell that the bottom is the same as the top. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. All right. So we know it's a prism. And if it has six sides, that makes it a hexagonal prism. A hexagon has six sides. All right, now let's take a look at this one. This is not a prism because it doesn't have two bases. This would be considered a pyramid. And again, we identify the pyramid by its base. So one, two, three, four, five sides on that base. So it would be a pentagonal, pentagonal, excuse me, pyramid. All right, now let's take a look at some other instances here working with three-dimensional shapes. I would like you in your notes to draw a cube and answer the following questions. So go ahead and take time to draw a cube. You're going to look at one edge of the cube. Now, and again, an edge is the segment that's formed when the two sides come together. How many edges are perpendicular to that particular edge and how many are parallel to it? So that will be number three, letter A. And then number three, letter B, will be look at one face of that cube. How many faces are perpendicular to that face and how many faces are parallel to it? All right, so answer both of those and we will check those in class tomorrow. Uh, we're going to move a little bit now from in three dimensions to surface area. Surface area is covering the outside of a three-dimensional shape. Okay, so for example, you can imagine this is a cereal box that somebody laid out flat, okay? And so we're going to find the area of that cardboard that makes up the cardboard box for the cereal box. What we have to do is we're going to find the area of each face and then we're going to add them together to find the surface area. So let's find the area first of the front. Okay. Uh, we know that this side is, well first of all it is a rectangle so we're going to use length times width. And it is 6 times 3 which gets us an area of 18. Okay, so I know that this is 18. If the front is 18, then I know the back is 18 also. All right, we'll get to some labels a little bit later. Uh, let's take a look at the top. The top is a rectangle, so area equals length times width. Area equals 3 times 1. That makes the area 3. So this one is 3 and this one is 3. All right, and then let's look at the two side panels. All right, we've got, um, it. those are rectangles again. Length times width, six times one, that would make them six. So this one is six and this one is six. If we add all six of those areas together for the faces, that will get you the surface area of the entire box. Okay, so we have 18, 18, six and six, three and three. Uh, let's see, that would be 36, 42, 48, and 6 would be 54, and it would be square inches. It's still surface area, so it would be square inches. What I would like you to do then is find the surface area of this cube if the edges of the cube are each 6 centimeters long. Now you need to figure out how many faces there are in a cube and what shape those faces are and then find the area and total them up. 
That's it for our notes today. We'll cover a little more in class tomorrow on these three-dimensional shapes.